In the summer of August, the cruel truth hidden in the sun, the pair enrolled in the past into today's two corpses, sealed in a quiet residential area, whether it is the harmony of the neighborhood or a bloody trace of suspicion. In the police to find out, the truth is about to be disclosed in front of people. Maddie Dudant Hollenby is a girl from Wimbledon, Cumbria, England, born on April 20, 1999. She has a happy family, her parents, Stephen and Rachel, and her younger brother, Fabian. She is outgoing and helpful, and is loved by all who know her. After high school, she followed her dream of studying marketing, and upon graduation she joined her father's company, Awe Mask, where she had a promising future, and it was evident to all that during her time there she attracted the attention of her supervisor, Benjamin Green. Benjamin, who is 41 and 19 years her senior, hails from Dewsbury, Yorkshire, in the north of England, and attended the University of Manchester, where he met his ex-wife, and although they have since divorced, he maintains a friendly relationship with the mother of his three children. Benjamin's interest in Maddie wasn't just because of her ability. Since his divorce he'd had a couple of short-lived affairs with some pretty young girls, and to him Maddie was the type he'd been looking for for a long time. Maddie, the young woman in her early twenties, also develops a crush on Benjamin, who is tall, stylish, and knows how to make her happy, and gradually, their working relationship becomes more intimate. They started dating during Christmas 2019. At first, their relationship was relatively easy, Neither Maddie nor Benjamin showed any desire to go further. Maddie was young and she didn't want to be tied down. On the other hand, Benjamin had three children and he had no intention of letting Maddie see them, keeping it casual seemed like a good idea for them. The Meanwhile, Maddie was sailing along in her career, having been snapped up by another company, Kirine Civils, to take on the role of project manager, a major promotion she deserved. She is working hard to build her reputation in the industry, however just as Maddie is making steady progress in her career, her relationship with Benjamin begins to take a subtle turn, and after they have been dating for over a year Benjamin begins to expect more from Maddie. He sees a future for both of them and therefore wants more, which includes letting Maddie meet his children and family, yet Maddie is content with the status quo and she's not ready to settle down. These differences in viewpoints led to many arguments and fights, which put a huge strain on their relationship, with Benjamin feeling rejected and lost. He was in this relationship and started to lose confidence in himself as well as in their relationship, which created a vicious cycle where he became more jealous and controlling when he felt rejected. Duh. He checks Maddie's cell phone when he gets a chance, and becomes frustrated whenever she gets a message that Maddie has always dreamed of buying her own house, and now that she has a job and a good income, she's seriously considering it, and Benjamin is also considering a move and suggests they buy a house together, however Maddie refuses, it's not what she wants at all, The Maddie wanted to buy her first house all by herself, and Benjamin said he understood, but in his heart, he was hurt deeply by the decision, yet he bought a nice house in a quiet residential neighborhood all by himself alone, and while he waited for the house to be built he moved in with Maddie and her parents, and it was a bold move, and this cohabitation arrangement went so well that Maddie's parents had a chance to get to know Benjamin, whom they actually liked, and but the age gap was a real concern, but if their daughter was happy in the relationship then that was all that mattered, and when the house was built and Benjamin moved in, he wanted Maddie to move in with him, but she didn't. In August of 2021, Maddie's parents plan a family vacation to Jamaica, a vacation that leaves no room for Benjamin. Not being invited made him uncomfortable, Benjamin felt ostracized, and after they had lived together for more than six weeks he expected the invitation to fall through. He was angry and extremely disappointed, and after a final argument, Maddie left Benjamin's house and began to question their relationship. The Maddie was feeling increasingly depressed, having had enough of Benjamin's nonsense and constant bickering, and Maddie was getting fed up with the whole situation. On August 25, 2021, Maddie intends to break up with Benjamin, they've been together for a year and a half so far. The night before that, she talked to her two best friends about it and they couldn't find common footing, they had different plans for the future, the in Maddie's eyes, this was the perfect opportunity to cut off the affair, 
and even though she knew it would be difficult, she was convinced that it was the right way to go, and Maddie had no intention of ending it all with a simple text message or phone call. She wanted to tell Benjamin in person. In my opinion, this is a very bold and undignified choice. Maddie was planning to go after the day's work was done. Maddie looked slightly nervous about this impending break. After all, she didn't really know how Benjamin would react to it. Duh. At 3.35 p.m., Maddie, who was interested in seeking help from her friends, sent a text message that, anxiously waiting to be comforted, her close friends were urging her to be firm, that it was the right thing to do, and as she approached Benjamin's residence at a pace, Maddie sent out a text message to give herself a quick call if they did not hear anything from her within an hour, duh. Just a minute later, she sent another goodbye message. After an hour had passed without any news from the friends, they tried to contact Maddie but failed to get a response, and the situation continued like this for several hours. And at this time Benjamin could not be found, and throughout the night the friends failed to get any news from him. The next day, one of the friends decided to contact Maddie's mother, Rachel, who is Maddie's mother, was horrified when she received the call and realized that she had not seen her daughter come home last night, so she checked the GPS on her daughter's cell phone, which showed Maddie presenting herself at Ben's home, which caused everyone to breathe a slight sigh of relief, thinking that all was well, but this was not the case, the mother had not previously known of her daughter's plans to break up with Benjamin but when it became clear that her daughter had missed an important work meeting and hadn't even shown up for work, she began to feel a sense of dread, which was definitely not normal for Maddie, duh. Benjamin's co-workers are also concerned because he hasn't shown up for work, and one of Benjamin's friends decides to check out his house, but the door to the room is closed and there's no response, nonetheless, and confusingly, Maddie's cell phone shows that she's there. So Maddie's parents rushed to the police station to report the case. The police soon came to Benjamin's mansion to investigate, so they used this to knock on the door, but could not get any response, and finally had no choice but to choose to break in. And when they pushed open that door, and learned the situation inside the room, the police soon found Benjamin, who was in the kitchen puddle of blood, and the police quickly found Benjamin, who was in the kitchen puddle of blood, and the police quickly found Benjamin who was in the kitchen puddle of blood. There was a kitchen tool beside him, and he was dead from the obvious wounds on his neck. However, where did Maddie go? After a brief search, the police found a second body in the house, that of Maddie. She was found upstairs on the left side of the bed, her body stabbed three times. Next to her cell phone and a broken kitchen utensil, there were no signs of any intrusion by the robbers or forced entry. The windows and doors showed no signs of having been opened, except for the back door, the. When Maddie's incident occurred, the original speculation that insisted someone had broken into her home was quickly replaced by the reality of multiple police cars bursting into the quiet neighborhood, and the case quickly made its way around social media and eventually to Maddie's parents. They recognized Benjamin's house at once, and from that moment they knew Maddie was dead, Maddie's smartwatch showed that her heart had stopped around 6 p.m. the day before, a few minutes after sending a text message to her best friends, and an autopsy showed that Maddie had no signs of defense, only three wounds inflicted by a sharp instrument on her left shoulder and chest, and that. She may have lived for some time after her injuries, but the medical examiner couldn't determine how long she had. A disconnected blade was found lodged in one of the wounds, and Benjamin suffered serious injuries, including a severed jugular vein and superficial wrist wounds. No one proved third-party involvement, and police determined that Benjamin ended his own life after killing Maddie. The preliminary hearing was held on July 7, 2022, at which all evidence was presented. Duh. Although some of Maddie's friends have noted that Benjamin may be a possessive person, there has never been any prior behavioral violence towards Maddie, and similarly, Maddie's father has not observed any signs of domestic violence in the previous six weeks that he has lived with Benjamin. According to a number of statements that have not been made public, Benjamin was an arrogant, haughty man, one who had a habit of preying on women far younger than himself, the. He abuses women, boasts of his labors, and even j the. His former neighbors also noticed that he often brought home one young and beautiful woman after another, 
and that he seemed to like younger women, probably for better control of them. The case may have arisen because he was deeply hurt by the news of the breakup, as he was used to starting and ending a relationship on his own terms. That's why he's obsessed with Maddie. It's like the old saying, you always want what you can't have. After Maddie announces she's leaving, Benjamin makes her pay for it in the worst way possible. The hearing finally concluded on this, that Benjamin ended Maddie's life when she tried to break up with him, and then cut himself off. For the desires of the heart, Benjamin paid a complete price, and his end was at the same time the end of Maddie's youth. The case may have been concluded, but the suspense lies not only in the truth of the matter, but in the tottering steps they took, the shock of ideals and realities that failed to dissolve, and which, perhaps, a consideration of the position and desires of others, would have made the world a little brighter.